Hey girl, how y'all doing? It's time for chit chat, chit chat with my voice all raggedy. <clears throat> girl, I probably should not be talking to be quite honest. How about I talk like this? Yeah, see this is a, hold on. You see, yeah, my window is right by that uh, street. Uh oh, right by the street. Um, it is mid-September. It is officially the first day of fall. The temperature has slowed down here in Phoenix, Arizona. Can y'all hear me? I feel like I'm whispering. Cause I'm used to talking like this. All right. <laughs> um, the weather here is, oh, girl, this is the weather where you want to stay inside, um, eat you some chowder, which I will be making a chowder today. I'm going to make it in a crock pot. I think I'm going to make potato corn soup. Wait a minute. Before I really, let me just go ahead and take my hair down. <laughs> Cause last time I forgot to even do my hair, child. I'm supposed to be moisturizing my hair today. I am serving you all bit of Alex Haley roots. <laughs> oh, y'all know I'm crazy. Um, so y'all know how we do this. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's going on in these YouTube streets, which is a bunch of foolery. I'm gonna talk about YouTube in general, and um. Talk about what I've been watching on TV and yeah. So y'all, these YouTube streets, first of all, there is we that are behind the scenes are noticing so, several things on this YouTube platform. Excuse the lighting. I should probably get some hair clips, but I'm not. To moisturize my hair, I will be using the Mish Leave-In Conditioner. And I've been using fenugreek oil, which will be a separate video, um, but she's in this right here, yeah. I should probably get some moisture, so let me go get my spray bottle that has water. Just a second, y'all. So, <sighs> one of the more popular YouTube channels have been under fire by the FTC. Now, my son, who is all bit of six years old, going on 13, absolutely loved this little kid called Ryan's TV. He used to like him more when he was younger, right? Used to always watch him. Y'all, my nail, my nail, hold on, my nail is caught on something. <clears throat> my hair. <clears throat> y'all, this is my allergies. This is why I'm coughing. Um, let me... That ain't gonna do nothing. I need a nail file. Ryan's TV is a kids channel that um, uh, he reviews toys. He's been on YouTube for a while. The baby's like six years, no he's seven. He's seven years old, I think, seven or eight. Um, <clears throat> and he basically opens up all these toys. He has tons of endorsements now. You can see his uh, no good toys at Walmart. The reason why I say that because all those toys are cheap as hell. Um, <clears throat> but the kids still want them. They buy them. Right? So this is the problem with Ryan's TV as far as monetization go goes and ads. His core audience is between the ages of three and five. Uh, I remember when JB was there. He was around three and a half to four years old when he really started watching this child. And he's like, it's not fair. He gets all these toys and his parents buy him all these toys. I said, boo, boo, boo. His parents do not buy him these toys. These companies are sending him toys to review. But my baby was only three and a half going on four. There's no way he would be able to know that <clears throat> his parents were basically getting sponsorships. That is the problem. Okay, so a three, three to five year old cannot differentiate between a ad versus a sponsor versus, okay, you really did um, buy this product and now you're reviewing it on your channel. That goes against FTC policy. Um, and then that falls into monetization. So a lot of these family channels and kids channels are being demonetized. Then on the flip side, you have people who are using foul language. They're also being demonetized. So what the, What does YouTube want? What, what, do you want us to be kid friendly or do you not want us to be kid friendly? <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of happening. Um, I'm not going to get into more of the behind the scenes stuff. I have shared my frustrations in the past when it comes to this new creator studio. For those of us who have to edit our videos, it's a learning curve. It is what it is, y'all. Then there are these drama channels. For the past three weeks, 
some of these drama channels, and when I mean drama channels, drama gossip tea channels, like the James Caldwell, the Sean Bradley. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put Shelly in there. Shelly, I'm not gonna put you in there because I like Shelly. <laughs> Pam viewers of you. I don't think she's been doing much of that. Um Fay Fay, someone named V S and Timothy Bradley. I don't know, there was some type of beef. Oh, and someone named is it Jay Wilson J and King Jives, Pastor Jives? Child, some of these people I don't even know. But what is really catching, the reason why it's now serious drama is apparently Timothy, which is an older gentleman, I love Timothy, he's funny to me. But lately these videos have been, I've been like, what the hell? But I understand where he's coming from to a certain point. Someone called him basically saying another person had his personal information, his address. What the hell? Um, and I think Shelly, I saw your comment um, really expressing some concern for him, rightfully so. But I'm like, people are having to get restraining orders on other YouTubers? Let me tell you something. There is nothing in my life that would make me go that far digging up dirt on someone. These people have some serious psychological issues. Looking up a risk warrants and stuff now if it's in a situation where there's someone who cannot help them so because i know s hutchison's edge hutchison shelly has sometimes um she has used her platform whatever you you say think about her like her like her or love her hate her or love her whatever she has actually used her platform to help people who are in danger that's totally different from i'm just gonna dig up some dirt on someone just because i want to f with them you know what i mean what the hell so yeah Girl, people getting restraining orders on other YouTubers? Child, ain't that some mess? It's sad. You know, that really is, that's messed up. That really is. So, <clears throat> that's that sector that can get really nasty. And the funny thing about it is that it'll go all full circle. Like, like catch this. In two or three more months, some of these people will be back friends again. You know what I mean? We ain't blowing. Ooh. Um... I did post recently all of the upcoming videos. I'm going to be hopefully trying to um, produce for you guys in the next few weeks, months. Look, don't tell me about no other product line coming up. Someone asked me if I was going to review um, Tracy's. What's her name? Diana Ross's daughter. <laughs> Tracy Ellis Ross. She has a new line called Pattern. It looks beautiful. The, you know, packaging is wonderful. Girl, no, I'm not reviewing that line. No, I'm not. I'm not. There are a couple of more products that I am going to review. I've been promising to review these for months. So I am going to get that out of the way, okay? <clears throat> um, what I'm watching on TV. Child, what am I not watching on TV? First of all... <coughs> <clears throat> my favorite show right now. Why am I clapping? My favorite show right now is Why Women Kill. When I tell you this show is giving me everything that I've ever wanted in life. I love this show. I'm watching Why Women Kill. I'm watching the Black Lady Sketch Show. And I'm, of course, I'm watching Peaky Blinders with Mr. Sh Thomas Shelby. Um, so Why Women Kill is this three part generational decade type of show. Basically it's exactly what the title about these three women wives and they have these intertwining stories on why they eventually end up killing their husbands. You have the late 50s, 60s with this of course traditional uh, submissive housewife who doesn't work and her husband is cheating on her. I'm not going to give a lot if you want to watch it. Her husband is cheating on her with a waitress at a diner. You then have the 80s wife who I'm all here for with. Is it Lisa Lou? Y'all when I tell you this storyline this is my favorite storyline. <laughs> Uh, so Lisa Lou is married to someone who is in the closet, but not really. She catches him. I guess she receives a photo of the lover, right? She decides to have an affair with an 18-year-old boy down the street. The last one is my least favorite character because it's too much. I get it that every every storyline is an extreme, but this is the extreme of the extreme. You have this modern-day African-American feminist lawyer who is married to a white man. They have an interracial relationship. By the way, she is bisexual, and they have an open marriage. And they allow the other woman to live in. 
I'm like, if this is not the most extreme, my, my best friend absolutely despises that. <laughs> we always talk about it. Um, because it's just, you know, let's just get the most extreme um, example as the modern day and let's roll with it. <clears throat> but I absolutely love it. I don't know what channel it comes on because I watch everything on Showbox, you guys. So I do apologize. But the show itself is called, again, Why Women Kill. Love it. I am also watching the Black Woman Sketch Show. It is Mad TV meets Angela Davis meets... I mean, it is out there. It is hilarious. There's some of them that I'm like, hmm, <clears throat> I don't know about that. But this comes on, is it HBO or is it Stars, y'all? Again, I watch everything on Showbox, which is only on Androids because I have my old cell phones. Um, but so far, I'm digging it. It's really funny. Um, and it's a sketch show. There are four women that p play these characters. <clears throat> and then they have their guests. They have celebrity guests that come on um, and fill in with certain roles. Absolutely hilarious. You have to check it out. Again, it's called The Black Woman Sketch Show. Oh, Lord. Did I spray y'all? Um, age gaps. All right, y'all. Age gaps. How do you guys feel about age gaps? Those of you who don't know, my husband is 13 years my senior. I'm 39. Do the math. Um, that is not his real age. And that's a long story because those of you who don't know, a lot of people and who are born in the royal royal areas in another countries, they're not born in the hospitals, they're born at home. And so <clears throat> they just guessed his age. Um if they were to guess really, he's probably in his mid mid forties, mid to late forties. So he, they're, they're off by five or six years. Not only that, but they have a different calendar than us. We're not even going to go go there. That's a whole different... I know some of y'all have a different calendar. Yes, there are other areas of the world where they're on a different calendar than we are here in the States or in Western society, okay? Girl, moving on. So while we were at this hotel, there was one little girl... I shouldn't say little girl. I need to stop that. <clears throat> there was one young lady that I befriended and she worked at the front desk at one of these hotels, right? Started to get to know her because the one thing I, first thing that I immediately recognized, me being a hair, hair person, I recognized her hair. And then I recognized her beautiful face. She has long, beautiful, wavy, I would probably say she's 3B3C, black, long hair. And I mean long, <clears throat> her hair is, is tailbone length. Um, curly, wavy, and healthy, and thick. And to have all of that wrapped up, and then to have all this melanin she had, was a beautiful thing so i was getting to know her come to find out she's multi multi-culture girl she got everything uh <coughs> but basically she's latino <laughs> girl don't ever ask a, a millennial what, what their background is they'll tell you everything everything on their dna profile but she's adorable so we were just getting to know each other and talking every every other day that she was working come to find out she tells me that um <coughs> she nonchalantly mentioned her boyfriend and that he was a little older than her and I said, what do you mean by older? I mean, my husband is, you know, 10 years my senior, so what's a little older? She's like, oh, I said 40s? She didn't say anything. She, So that made me assume that he was older. I said 50s? Basically, she never answered my question. Mind you, I come to find that she's only 19 years old. Now, I do not blame her. In my eyes, even though she's quote unquote an, an adult, she's a child. I can have a 19 year old child. I'm 39. I could technically have a 19 year old child, okay? So when I hear something like this, a 19 year old dating someone who's possibly more than likely is old enough to be her father, I always think about him. What would make him want to date someone who's young enough to be his child i get it there are certain situ situations where you can't control who you love but i can't even look yes my husband's 10 years older than me but i don't find anything attractive at 39 i don't find anything attractive with a 25 26 year old let alone someone who's 19. so <clears throat> i rarely give advice to people i'm not like that um but she you know every now and then she will make a comment I'm not going to give the young girls, you know, all her, her business up on here, but, um, she really does love him and care for him and all this. And my husband's like, you need to leave that little girl alone. You know, there's some, there's some mature, <laughs> as his sweetheart, 
she is mature for her age but she's only 19 um and as a woman she would change what she wants in life will change as she gets older he's grown he's lived two lifetimes he already knows what he wants okay at least he should know it damn 50 something years old we know girl but what my point is that he has lived a life two lifetimes she's barely lived y'all come on you cannot tell me a 19 year old absolutely definitely knows what she i like the girl and she's a really sweet girl and i let her know i said look take it for someone i don't normally give out advice but i like you you're a very beautiful, attractive girl, y'all. Every time I went up there, there was a man up there just googly eyed because she's stunning. I mean, she I saw her with and without makeup. She is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. I said, look, you have options. You have options. You're 19 years old. I said, honestly, I don't even think you should get serious talking about having babies with someone. I don't think you should get, even get serious with someone until you're in your 20s live and i let her know i said look again i like you i'm gonna let you know this it is hard it is extremely hard you have to be very careful who you have children with one two what you want as a woman will change when you're 19 to 25 to 35 to 40 and it should change because you shouldn't be the same person at 19 that you are at 40 30 you know what i mean you should be growing as an individual he know what he wants he's already lived his life you're still trying to figure that out so what you may want because will change it will change later on so just without verbatim verbatim saying i was wanting her to wait before getting serious with someone wait so what do y'all think about that? Do you think they'll work? Um, those of you who are married or, you know, long, well, whatever, you know, <clears throat> what's the oldest you've ever dated? Ow, girl. What's the oldest, you know, age gap, you know, would you ever do that? Mind you, things are different now than they were for us. You know what I mean? Even for me. Ciao, bye. Mm-mm. Not even interested. <clears throat> so y'all, yeah, enough of that. So let's talk about this HM h and m ad that y'all or y'all help us are also rattled up about so let me tell you something first of all shout out to tam cam t-a-m-k-a-m she's a subscriber of mine but she also has her own youtube channel beautiful young lady i love her hair um she looks like she's a 4b 4c her channel has all different types of stuff i'll i'll link it down below <clears throat> i think she's from louisiana sis are you from louisiana i detect a louisiana accent but she did a video on this that I watched this morning about the H&M ad that people were just, girl, fit to be tired about. So, let me, that people were clearly upset about in the African American community. But this is the thing that, this is the thing that trips me out about us, my people. And I'm talking to my people. There is nothing wrong with that ad. Now, a lot of us are quick to jump on the bandwagon instead of investigating and researching a story. Um, and so we just fly off the handle. We're quick to share something. That's why I don't share a lot of stuff. I don't forward stuff. I don't do all that all the time, okay? That's not my cup of tea. Speaking of, hold on. So H&M had this marketing campaign where I was it a back to school or something girl and so the little girl african-american girl had her hair clearly she's girl she was 4z 4z she had a little power puff ponytail pulled up and then back and the first thing i saw when i saw that picture i was like oh she looked like she could fight <laughs> you know y'all know what i'm talking about that's the hairstyle and I, i'm gonna get to the serious part when i saw that me being as silly as I am, I'm like, oh, she's the one that you gonna you gonna tell her after school who you gonna go beat up and she's gonna have your back. I didn't think anything else, okay? <clears throat> you know, that's my silly initial assessment. Then I was like, okay, why is the baby hair looking like this? But then I saw the other pictures of the other of the other kids and their hair was messy too. I don't see see this is the thing. First of all, H and M knew what they were doing. Meaning they knew to a certain degree that black black people would snap. And it worked. I bet you their sales are going to be fabulous for this quarter, baby. It worked because what are we doing? We're talking about it. Even my ass. We are talking about it, okay? I personally don't shop at H&M, but more power to you. Just because it's not my style, okay? 
Um, <clears throat> so the other children also had their hair messy. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I, I kept seeing some comments, you know, maybe they should have laid down her edges, use edge control. I don't even use edge control. It's 4C4. It's, come on. I don't care about that. The only thing I will say that at least they should have moisturized her hair. They could have moisturized her hair and attempted to put it in a, a side bun, a little an afro that was kind of messy or something you know what i mean at least have the baby's hair moisturized no she didn't need she didn't need any gel or any edge control she just needed some that's what she needed a little moisture that's it yeah so pick your battles okay and they knew what they were doing the marketing ploy worked okay um we are the largest consumer those of you who are not from here i'm letting you know even though we make up a small percentage overall in the U.S., depending on what city you're in, we are still the largest consumer. We buy everything. Look, look, look around me. Am I, am I, <laughs> look over here. Hold on. Look over here. Good example. You see all that over there? <clears throat> we bought everything to the point to where we spend more money, meaning African Americans in this country. We spend more money than some countries do in their own. Y'all, I think about that. Look it up, girl. Google is free. So, yeah, y'all, mm, I, I can't ride with that one. Pick your battles. Like I said, I can't really ride with that one. So, y'all, that's it for me. My hair is still dry at the back. <laughs> All right, y'all, take care. Bye.